Do you have spare wires laying around waiting for the right moment to attack you? Well recently mine did and now I will strip them of their skin and everything they love and sell their bodies. I have a box of old wires and I wanted to check how much money can I make from stripping them. So to get the juicy copper I need to strip the cables. Didn't work. Let's try reversing. So let's try another approach. I'm gonna Minecraft the shiz out of it. Alright, you can't mine copper with an axe. I could also just burn off the insulation. <laughs> Hey, for those of you who didn't get the bit, let me explain. Burning insulations from copper wire releases harmful chemicals and toxins into the environment, contributing to air pollution and posing health risks to human and wildlife. Additionally, it can release greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide, which contributes to climate change, further exacerbating environmental problems. problems. Yes, so you can buy devices like these, but look at the price. I'm here to earn money, not spend it. Of course, the smaller one you can get from AliExpress for like 8 bucks. That's kind of a cheating, so I bought one. But now, let's look at this from another perspective. I have wished to work with SolidWorks for a long time now, because nothing says more an engineer than using SolidWorks. And now, it is a perfect chance to design a wire stripper with SolidWorks, and all I need to do is start learning. From this tutorial, we will start new training series for SOLIDWORKS 2020. So after working for a few days, that's a nice way of saying that I have worked for a few hours during these days, I actually made something. The first part though is a red herring, cause it's actually not that easy to make some nonsense. Following pretty good tutorials of this channel, I made good parts like a space toilet, an angular shield, strange front of a forklift, an untieable knot. A poor man's bowl? Probably some kind of a part from a tank maybe? It seems it's pretty easy to learn SOLIDWORKS and how to make parts and assemblies. Like this assembly I made which somehow goes through other parts or like these inner engine piston rods and a crankshaft though I'm not completely sure if this is how piston rods move inside an engine. Well no matter, it is spectacular how in this day and age you can learn basics of SOLIDWORKS in just a few days, nay, hours from YouTube. So what I want to do is something similar to this cable stripper. I will start with designing the roller and the idea is that the roller has these teeth which press and push the cable while stripping it. Outside I leave a step for bearing to put on it and in one side I make 4 holes for threaded inserts. Though I think the video for that stuff got corrupted cause I couldn't find it. I made this part and yeah I know it looks god darn nice, it really does. I put some bearings, bearings on with some spacers because, <laughs> because I didn't do the job quite well in the first time. So yeah. It has some bearings, so it could move better, spin, so that <laughs> that really makes it look very nice. And here I can put on a handle or, or I can put a, I can put on a handle or I can put on a so what I'm babbling about is I put the thread inserts so I could connect the handle to spin the roller which pushes the wire. I could also design an adapter so I could connect electric drill to spin the roller. So out of this piece of wood I will make a case for the whole device. Okay so since I didn't have the drill 
the correct drill to uh, to drill out the holes for the bearings eh, for the bearings I tried sawing them with this and since I'm using this old fret saw I've spent five minutes googling this word of course it broke and I had no replacement saws so that's that for me trying to cut corners so now I have to go to the shop and get the correct drill bit if it's in my price range. And if it's not, well, well, let's hope it is. Let's really hope it is, because it's not a short way to the shop. Bye. Yeah, so this was the best that I could find and it's in my price range, however. Still not the correct diameter. But luckily, after going home, I did actually find the replacement saws I need. And with strenuous work, I made some very angular circles which fit my bearings. So for cutting the wire, I bought this stainless steel circular blade. Though it is yet to be determined if it's actually stainless, the blade will be fitted on an axle held in place with nuts. And the axle will spin because of the bearings fitted on it. As you can see, these knives are no joke, they're actually sharp very sharp and they will cut through insulation like through butter but they're also fragile so they need to cut at precisely 90 degree angle to adjust the height of the blade i will use a threaded rod which will be connected to the frame that holds the blade so do you remember the roller i made well it was actually printed with a 30 percent infill and 1.2 millimeter wall thickness and so I was really curious, how strong is it? So I tried breaking, and oh boy, it broke really easy. So I printed it again, of course, this time with a 80% infill and 1.6mm thickness. To be completely honest, I actually forgot to film how I connected all the pieces together, but I will leave a assembly file at my GitHub page, which you can download and just follow along if you decide to make one of my Frankensteins. So here is my first attempt at stripping the cables with the cable stripper I made. And yes, this is a unpolished version, cause it doesn't even have a handle. But I'm actually pretty impressed at how good it works and knowing that I made it and it works, well that's just fantastic. At each side I added 3 bolts and 3 bolt nuts so I could simply tighten the blade at the correct spot I need so it wouldn't go too much to the one side or another while stripping the cable. So there are two types of cables here. One which has a quite soft insulation and the second which has a very hard insulation and you can see that by bending it stays in place well it also depends on cable but so for the softer insulation i will use my own insulation remover i made and for the harder insulation i will use the one i bought from aliexpress so enough of this chit chat it's time to make some actual money oh and i got more cables So to use this Aliexpress cable stripper, you first need to choose the correct diameter hole for your cable, then press the knife handle, then press the handle which presses the blade and pull the cable. Here I'm pressing everything in my hand, but I would suggest pressing it on the table for better stability.
wood but it's a plated copper I have 12.5 and then I have these unstripped cables which I'm probably just a bit too lazy to strip them or just there's way too much stuff in the insulation so let's check how much this is and this stuff sells as wires wind insulation and it is 12.9 kilos then I have all this stripped insulation and how much of it is it? so there is almost 5 kilos of just insulation that's quite a lot the question is where I'll put the insulation now <laughs> And I do have an idea. and go for a vacation in a scrapyard for a activity of metal recycling from all that hard work i got 91 euros and 30 cents so after everything let's talk about the is it worth factor so the aliexpress insulation remover is cheap and it works pretty well but it's not very comfortable and it works for specific diameter cables and sometimes the cable can be a little bit loose in the hole and then the blade only cuts the side of the insulation which is pretty annoying the insulation remover i made well it works really good but i will admit it has some flaws first of all it looks pretty janky then to regulate the blade height takes a little bit of time and if the blade is not in the vertical position to the cable the blade might go to the side and break though it happened only once to me so if I would choose to do lots of cable insulation removing, I would definitely choose my own cable stripper. However, if I would like to just remove insulation while watching TV shows or something like that, I would choose the AliExpress one. 